Welcome back to another great edition of the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. We are bringing back a guest who we had on literally just a few weeks ago because there is kind of a big thing happening here in Canada uh, with the Freedom Convoy in Ottawa. And we wanted to get some reactions from some of the political leaders. And we decided to start with uh, Dr. Rana, the leader of the Centrist Party of Canada. Canada. Doctor, thank you so much for doing this. It's an honor and a pleasure once again. You're welcome, Chris. Thank you so much for inviting me at this show. So let's 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 get this party and let's try to get this digested because uh, I think Canadians from coast to coast to coast are are seeing what's happening in Ottawa. Uh, it's popping up uh, across the country in at legislatures. Um, people are upset. People are angry at the government and the pandemic restrictions. What has your, been your take over the last 12 days on what's been happening at Parliament Hill around this freedom convoy? I think the protesters have right to express their opinion. Uh, in uh, They have concerns. Uh, they are hardworking people. They are truckers. They um, drive all the time. They keep our uh, grocery um, stores uh, full and um, uh, they keep us alive during this uh, pandemic time, and they are the most important people uh, in our supply chain, right? So, uh, you know, when you put restrictions like this, uh, so it's, um, uh, you know, it, 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 it certainly, um, you know, interferes with their, uh, you know, livelihood. They have families, uh, they have uh, uh, children, they have to put uh, food on table for their kids and families. Uh, so, um, some of them have been restricted, uh, although we can talk more about, you know, what, 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 what is the reason, but uh, uh, looking at one side, they, they have right to, you know, protest. So let's dive into it here, because uh, the federal government here in Canada and the federal government in the United States have implemented a vaccine passport for truckers crisscrossing the, uh, the, the government, the, the U.S. Canadian border. And the 10% who are not vaccinated are upset because, as you said, it affects their livelihood. It affects their job. It affects them being able to put stuff on their table. And this is where this convoy sort of started from. So from your perspective and from the centrist party of Canada's perspective, how should the government proceed with this vaccine mandate for truckers crossing the border? Or do you think we should even have one? Uh, it's very controversial and difficult thing to make a, uh, you know, like to make a, uh, you know, universal, uh, you know, kind of uh, opinion on it, to have a consensus of all the Canadians. Uh, but I think if you look at politicians, the politicians are not physicians, they are not scientists, they uh, don't make these rules. Uh, they are, uh, I mean, they are to follow the guidance of the public health professionals. I mean, they, they are bound to follow the advice of scientists and public uh, health professionals. Uh, the, uh, you know, vaccine mandates for nurses, for doctors, because they interact with people. Uh, similarly, other professions, which, uh, for example, the flight attendants, right? Uh, so when they bring this, uh, based upon the advice of uh, public health professionals. Uh, so they uh, did the same thing for truckers. And uh, uh, as you yourself mentioned that about 90% of the truckers, they went ahead and they got a vaccination. Uh, and so the 10% of those who, uh, you know, uh, decided not to do so, they, they have right to do so. They have right to deny, they have right, uh, it's their own body, they, they uh, should have the right. And, you know, in a country where uh, people can uh, refuse a life-saving treatment or people can ask for assisted suicide, uh, uh, refusing to vaccination should not be a major issue. But the problem comes that when uh, you are having a mandate for other professions which are coming in contact with other people. So those uh, similar uh, principles would apply to, to the truckers. So, uh, so these restrictions, uh, I, I think government cannot make uh, one rule for uh, one community, another rule for 
uh, another community. I think if they make uh, these rules for people who come in contact very frequently to other people, uh, the government uh, probably is left with no choice than implementing this. And especially in this situation, it's not only the Canadian government because the US government is doing so as well. Even if the Canadian government uh, would lift, uh, the, uh, lift the restrictions, these uh, uh, poor truckers would not be able to go to US. So they'll be stuck uh, in, in any way. So there is no like uh, a silver bullet, uh, you know, which uh, could solve this issue. I, I agree. There is no silver bullet here, but I, I've been paying attention close to the story as it's been unfolding over the last 10, 12 days. I'm assuming you have as well, being a leader of a federal party. I, we are seeing uh, provincial governments start easing restrictions, easing provincial mandates, because as they say, we need to start living with COVID-19 instead of just being concerned about COVID-19 and having restrictions. Um, one of the big things that this convoy in Ottawa right now, as we speak, and the ones that are popping up at Coots, Alberta, at the Ambassador Bridge in uh, Windsor, Ontario, People are fed up and they want restrictions and mandates to end. I need you to talk to me and talk to my listeners and talk to my viewers and explain to me how the centrist party, what the centrist party believes in potentially ending the restrictions federally or even provincially and where the country needs to go to start unifying us because we are very divided right now over restrictions and mandates. As I said, there is no easy solution for this. I think uh, if our party was uh, in power, we would, uh, we would, uh, uh, yes, uh, you know, train people to, uh, you know, they say learn to live with it. Uh, but the restrictions would be lifted only gradually. I don't think you can suddenly remove all the restrictions and say that, okay, from tomorrow, everything goes back to pre-pandemic era, uh, pre era, and now people are allowed without any mask, without any vaccination, with, you know, like go back to normal. I think that would not be a wise step that could lead to a disaster. Yes, the, uh, you know, as uh, we have seen, the uh, new variants are, Yes, they are more infectious, but they are less uh, potent, less virulent. So uh, probably restrictions could be eased gradually, uh, not uh, like suddenly, uh, but definitely there should be a plan to ease the restrictions. And also there has to be a solution. What the, uh, you know, the problem with this convoy is two-sided. Uh, in, in my opinion, the, on one side, uh, the, uh, I mean, both sides, uh, uh, you know, both sides did not take, uh, uh, you know, wise steps. For example, uh, uh, on the convoy side, there were people who, uh, you know, uh, waving the Confederate flags and uh, people were removing forcibly masks of people who worked there. They were harassing the healthcare workers. Then there were, uh, you know, Sevastika and so many things. I know most of the protesters are peaceful, but what happens when uh, so many people gather? There are a small group of people or a definite group of people who want to take the, you know, advantage of that solution. And when they take the, you know, advantage, uh, so they try to cause this and the whole uh, group is painted. For example, people were calling them, I, I do uh, uh, you know, disagree with calling them racist or white supremacists. I have always said that uh, we should not paint people with one brush, like calling all of them something, right? So yes, there are people, there are troublemakers in, in every group, right? So that caused some problems. And then on the other side, uh, on the other side, uh, the politicians, uh, at both government and opposition, and and uh, you know people may disagree with me. I blame opposition more than the government. 
what has happened in the beginning when the convoy started, the conservative politicians, uh, Mike Cooper from Alberta, right? He met them, he was serving them coffee. Even uh, the previous leader, Aaron O'Toole met them on the first day. And then there were uh, MPs who were, uh, you know, meeting them, who were bringing diesel, who were supporting them. So what I felt uh, uh, after studying all of this, that the opposition was not sincere in ending the protest. They were, uh, they were trying to incite it or they wanted uh, failure of the government. And what has happened, the convoy leaders are asking demands like dissolving the government, making a group of citizen, uh, citizen uh, group, uh, having a government, non-elected people, right? These yeah. demands can never be met in Canada. Canada is a peaceful democratic country, rule of law, uh, with rule of law. So uh, their demands are very extreme. And some of the politicians, even in, you know, even NDP, uh, I, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not afraid of saying that, even NDP did not play a good role because NDP leader was calling them racist and white supremacists and the troublemakers and all those. And some of the politicians, I'm sure you heard in the debate last night, you get a feel that the opposition want government to use force to bring army or military. They, uh, you, know, they, they, you know, they were asking, you know, what do you want to do now? I think, uh, you know, using force is not option here at all, right? If the opposition and the government would stand together and give them a one united message that the democratic institutions, uh, because uh, you know, uh, giving in to these demands will hurt our democratic institutions. If the politicians would have given one single message, last night in debate, all of the opposition uh, MPs, including NDP or Bloc or conservatives, they were hammering government. You know, I have a lot of disagreement with Justin Trudeau on many issues, but on but in this issue, I think saving our country, saving democracy, saving our government is most important. Otherwise, any group will bring 500 cars or tractors or trucks in future, a non-elected, non-democratic, non-political group, and they will ask for their demands and then the politicians will be divided. I think politicians did not play a good role in this case. There should have been a committee of all party MPs with the Minister of uh, you know, public safety, uh, going and talking to them. I have been saying from the day one that Mr. Trudeau should not avoid meeting them. He must meet them because once you meet someone, even if it's, you know, if, if, you know, even if it is your enemy, once you meet them, talk to them, they vent, they, you know, call you names or whatever, right? When, when you are um, a prime minister, you got to take the heat of the people, right? When you're leader of a party, you will take a lot of heat of people. People curse you, say bad names and call you names. So you should not be afraid of this. I think he should have met them and this would have cooled down the atmosphere. Now, I, I, I agree with that. I, I will say that I agree with the majority of your statement there, but I'm going to push back on you here and I want to hear where you're going to come at me on this. I, I will I will talk to everyone who I w can on this show. I love I love talking to people. I think Justin Trudeau should talk to people because he's the leader of this country. He's the prime minister, and he should be talking to everyone. But my my reaction to that is, if you are calling for the overthrow of the government and installation of a unelected citizen body to form government and overthrow Justin Trudeau, isn't that the line? Isn't that the line where you say, I'm not meeting with these people because all they want is to overthrow me and kick me out of office without an election, which we just had four months ago? Uh, yes, that's a red line. You never cross this in terms of the convoy. They should not have said this. I also feel that this might not have been their initial demand. This may be a reaction of ignoring them. You know, once you ignore someone, they get more agitated, more and more. They come with more tougher demands. If he would have met them initially, or if, you know, even if not him, a, a, a group of parliamentarians, maybe a group 
you know, few few MPs from every party make a committee and meet them. I think they would understand that these uh, these demands would never be met and they would withdraw these. You know, also when you are a prime minister, you are not prime minister of Quebec and Ontario. You are prime minister of all Canada, coast to coast to coast. Does not matter someone voted for you or not. Does not matter you don't, you got only two seats from Alberta. That's okay. You're still prime minister of Western Canada, right? Yeah. So uh, the, I, I have seen that, that Justin Trudeau has positioned himself more to be a leader of Eastern Canada in since 2015, since he, he has come into power. So that I think is not a right approach. So uh, we're going to get into a little touchy area right now, but I'm going to ask it anyway, because I think it's on a lot of people's minds. Well, it's been on my mind, my mind for the last few days. We, we aren't seeing the federal government, the city of Ottawa, the provincial government in Ontario step up and potentially try to de-escalate this with talking. Um, there has been conversation on social media, which you should never believe social media because it's a microcosm of society. And honestly, it, 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 it can lie from time to time. Weird concept. The idea that these protesters are being left alone because they're white has been thrown around a lot. If this was an indigenous protest or a blockade of an indigenous group, the police would have forcibly removed them. Because they are of white skin, they won't do it because they don't want to escalate it to further inflame the issue. And we are seeing more and more people of Ottawa take to the streets in counter protest of this protest that is happening up Parliament Hill. I want to get your reaction to the first statement of if these protesters were Indigenous, they would have been removed already. Do you agree with that statement? Uh I don't think that anyone who looks at facts on the ground would disagree that there is a lot of systemic racism in our country. It yeah. does not matter. Even uh, people who we so-called white people or black people or brown people, or you know, I, I hate using these terms. We are all humans. I, I, I think, I mean, I have a lot of friends who are from other communities. All of the, most of them agree that there is a systemic racism. And we have seen that in, uh, you know, indigenous uh, women and girls murdered more than the indigenous people, people of color being in jails and inmates getting severe punishments. Uh, I, I, I mean, uh, it, it does affect, uh, you know, especially in Quebec, uh, there's a height of, uh, you know, racism. I mean, Quebec, it, even, even the premier of Quebec, uh, you know, refuses to acknowledge there is a systemic racism in Quebec. You know, it's, it, it prevails to such an extent. And now with Bill 96, the Anglophones and Allophones are going through hell, right? Uh, yeah. So there, there is racism in all parts of our country. Uh, yes, I uh, uh, mean, uh, it, it's quite possible there have been some protests in the past which were in support of indigenous people in which arrests were made very quickly. Uh, so uh, it's it's uh, you know it's it's very unfortunate. I don't think it 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 should happen. Uh, but uh, also there is a difference in uh, taking an action uh, against five thousand people and uh, uh, fifty people. You know the five thousand people. There is a tendency that they might have guns. They might have. Uh, other ammunition and it could uh, lead to more, you know, casualties and tragedy uh, than a uh, smaller number of people. Uh, okay. So from the perspective of police, uh, I mean, it's, it, it's a challenge to deal with such a large crowd. We pride ourselves on going beyond that 15 second soundbite by becoming a backer of the show. With a quick visit to patreon.com and searching cross-border interviews, you can help continue this show. For as little as $3 a month, your support can ensure we grow and bring new and exciting things to our growing listenership. Click the link in the show notes and back the show today. I appreciate your answer on that, doctor. Um, I want to follow up on that statement, though, with the follow up on that my original question had was, we are seeing the rise of counter protests going on. Across this country, we saw people blockading the truckers in Vancouver, 
to get down to the leg or in Victoria to get down to the legislature. We've seen protesters, counter protesters in Toronto, and we are seeing people in Ottawa take to the streets because they are constantly bombarded with air horns, loud noises from these truckers. Now the court has uh, given an injunction to the uh, counter protesters to say there's going to be no air horns anymore because for 10 days until we can look at it a little bit further. In 12 days, we have become a more protest country than we have ever seen. Major news outlets around the world are looking at Canada now. How do we solve this? I know you've said on numerous occasions and throughout the interview so far that it's a complex situation, but you're a leader. We're, we're, we look to our leaders for solutions to complex issues. So what can we do to help both sides figure this out? Yeah, if, if I was in charge, yeah. what I would do, I would make a small committee. First of all, I'll meet a position, all parties, and I tell them that, uh, the situation is not the dangerous for the party and government, but it's a risk for our democratic institutions. So it's equally uh, opposition, uh, uh, you know, bloc or NDP or conservative. Everyone will be affected because our, you know, democratic uh, uh, system will be affected. So you take into confidence and you tell them, uh, now what is happening, unfortunately, from the back door, the, uh, some of the opposition MPs are helping, they are having pizzas with the uh, you know, truckers, and when they come in the parliament, they speak against the protest, right? So, and, and some, of the, some of the opposition uh, you know, people like one of the senator, uh, you know, he is from conservative. He spoke, uh, he spoke against his own party. And he said that, um, you know, he removed himself from the conservative caucus. And also one liberal MP removed uh, himself uh, from, I think he also spoke against the leadership of liberal party of not taking the initiative to end this. So first step I would take, I'll sit down with the opposition and I'll tell them that, listen, we need to have one voice because this is uh, their demands are unconstitutional. That's number one step. Number two, I'll make a committee. I'll go myself with the committee and meet with the leaders of the convoy. I mean, they're humans, they're Canadians, they're our you know, fellow you know, citizens. They're not going to uh, shoot you or do something. They, uh, I'm sure they're, 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 yes, they are frustrated. They have some demands, but when you sit down with them, you talk to them, let them vent. Uh, you know, uh, I, I think uh, they will back up and the atmosphere will cool down uh, once you meet them. That That is essential uh, than avoiding. Them. Um, I appreciate you talking about uh, Senator uh, Dennis Patterson of Nunavut, who left the Conservative caucus on Tuesday, the day after Aaron O'Toole was ousted as leader, and then also of Joel loud uh, lightfoot or loudfoot I, I forget how to pronounce his last name I do apologize but the Quebec MP who resigned as the Liberal caucus chair but he's still in the Liberal caucus we are seeing a more uh, how do I say this more independent mind thinking for a lot of the MPs right now and a lot of people in parliament who are willing to speak up against their leaders and we have just recently seen the ouster of Aaron O'Toole, former leader of the Conservative Party. Are we becoming a more independently and independently minded thinking country where we are OK with our politicians, whether it be from Conservatives, NDP or uh, Centrist Party or the Liberals to think freely when they get elected? No, I would say no. <laughs> okay. Uh, no. The, 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 these are only a couple of examples. One MP from liberal, right? Yeah. And one senator from conservative. The, I'm most disappointed with if any politician, I'm most disappointed, maybe two politicians or three, you would say, on top, I would put the in, uh, you know, interim leader of conservative party. I'm most disappointed with her. Candace because Bergen. Rather, yes, rather than reassuring government that they stand with government, they stand with liberal party on this issue, liberal government, I should say, not liberal party. You know, she should have been giving 100% support, not using 
uh, you know, double, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, double, uh, you know, meaning or double uh, type yes. of, you know, message. Yeah. You know, she should have stand with the government. Doesn't matter is a liberal government or NDP government or conservative government. I'm very disappointed. Number two, I'm also disappointed with uh, Jagmeet Singh for taking such an extreme position of calling all of the crowd, you know, racist and calling names. And also I'm disappointed with Mr. Trudeau. Mr. Trudeau should take initiative, not ignore them. And he should invite the opposition to talk to them and send a significant number of opposition MPs to talk to them with, of course, the you know his own ministers and cabinet. And if I was in his place, I'll go myself. You can talk to on Zoom, but I know he's uh, in isolation because of COVID. Well, he's know. not anymore. Uh, he's not anymore. He was out. He was at a uh, question period today and last night. Um, mm. I want to I want to follow up with a statement you just said there about uh, interim leader Candace Bergen. It was revealed by some news outlets that she wants to paint this picture that the convoy, the protest are all Trudeau's fault. I, I agree with you. We need to work together to come up with a, a compromise here. But when when politics is involved, you can't work together sometimes, and it's hard to work together sometimes. So, what message do you have to the Conservative Party right now, who, in sort of your words, is inflaming this issue as well? Even or even to Jagmeet Singh, who is inflaming this issue and is causing it to continue on for 14, 15, 16, almost three weeks now. Yeah, I think all conservative MPs with their leader should take a very strong position and stand with government and assure them 100% support. And same with MP and Bloc, uh, in NDP and Bloc, they should assure 100% support to the government, right? That they are with them and this must end because this is making uh, life of people of Ottawa hell and also, uh, you know, affecting, you know, other people and the, and, you know, and the businesses and the ho- your patients and hospitals, senior residences, right? Uh, and it's uh, uh, giving a very, you know, bad name to our democracy all over the world, you know? People, you know, people have been calling us what is happening in Canada, right? So uh, rather than uh, uh, standing uh, uh, against government or trying to uh, paint, uh, what I feel that the opposition wanted uh, to paralyze government, uh, you know, and then, uh, force government to use uh, force on these people, then have some casualties and then make an issue, you know, oh, you know, this is what they did because that's what the the opposition does. If there's no issue, you know, create issue and then out of that issue, make it an issue and then say that, oh, the government has failed. This is a threat to our democracy, not to just the liberal government. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the centrist party here now, because uh, as I, as we've mentioned in the interview so far, uh, we've seen Aaron O'Toole, who was seen more as a centrist conservative. He was more of the central right party, uh, was turfed as leader in the last two weeks since the start of this convoy, uh, this protest on Parliament Hill. And we are seeing the, the conservatives move more to the right, leaving an opening in the center of the uh, political spectrum. What is your message to those conservative supporters who are looking for a new home, who are saying, I can't stay with the conservatives because they are being divisive. They are dividing the country. As much as Justin Trudeau is, we don't want to go to the liberals. We're not going to the NDP. We need a new home. What is your message to the conservative movement who is looking for a political home right now? Okay. In two words, centrist is their new home. That's one thing. <laughs> okay. Let, let me go back a little bit uh, to Mr. O'Toole. Uh, you know, I initially thought that Mr. O'Toole sincerely wanted to move party from right or extreme right to close to center. But when I look at his last message, uh, if you had a chance, he uh, gave a message uh, the last when, you know, after he left, uh, I was disappointed. He's praising Johnny McDonald 
he starts with John A. McDonald. This is party of John A. McDonald. And then he calls, uh, uh, you know, Brian Mulroney. Uh, he had so many scandals. Then he says Harper's principal, you know, politics. He uses Mr. Harper's politics, very principal. And I was really disappointed. Any politician, doesn't matter liberal, conservative, NDP, who uh, still is a fan of Mr. Harper's you know, politics, the way he divided the country, the way he uh, sold our interest to China and locked them for more than 30 years, uh, the way he divided people fear mongering and uh, you know, pro your parliament. Uh, it, it was, you know, it was horrible. That was in, you know, I'm a, you know, student of history. I think that was one of the worst government Canada has ever seen. So when I saw his last message, so I realized that Mr. Um, O'Toole was, I, I'm, you know, I, I have a doubt if he was really sincere to move his party close to center. It was just, uh, he, you know, he was, you know, trying to just appeal to voters of uh, liberal, some voters of liberal and NDP. I think now, we're, now when he is gone, I think there was a lot of pressure from social conservatives. Uh, I, I hate to talk about the part, other parties' internal affairs, but it looks to me that it was a pressure from social conservatives for him to leave. And now uh, they, 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 they are pushing for you know, one MP from Ottawa, I think he has jumped into the race. So if people like them come, uh, they would pay an easy way for Justin Trudeau to win because the more uh, extremists they become, they will move more right. If they bring aggressive people like this, uh, that would happen. So you're, you're speaking of Pierre Paul Hiver, the liberal, the conservative MP for Carleton. He has announced, he announced like five days after Aaron O'Toole was gone that he was running for the leadership. Um, I uh, let's, let's start a wrap up because we've hit the 30 minute mark and I want to make sure that we get this wrap up done here. What's next? What's next for this government, this protest, this movement? COVID is not going anywhere. We have to start living to learn to live with it as much as I don't like saying that because I had it. I know how terrible it can be, but this Omicron wave is a little bit less significant than the first wave and the second wave. What's next? Give the people of Canada hope that somehow through our political discourse that we have right now, we can get through this and not be as divided as we are. Um. I think we'll get more and more divided. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, afraid. Uh, we, uh, you have seen uh, the move in the last two days from two premiers, uh, uh, Jason Kenney and uh, Scott Moe. You know, they announced that from uh, within a couple of days they are going to remove uh, all uh, or most of the uh, restrictions. Uh, this is a reaction, and that would incite the uh, the convoy further, because you know the, the, this is what I I feel. They 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 want to get the you know sympathies of the convoy people. That you know look at these two provinces. They already uh, dropped all the restrictions. Why cannot federal government or Ontario can do that, right? And uh, I I am not uh, you know mistaken if I say that Mr. Doug Ford may do the same thing just to uh, put. Uh, uh, the government, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sounding more pro-government today, right? <laughs> it's just I'm doing this for the sake of our country, you know. I have no, uh, you know, I, I, I have no agreement with policies of Mr. Trudeau, but this is issue of our, you know, country, our security, our safety, our democracy, right? So these Can our democracy might, survive uh, it? Can our democracy uh, survive the next six months, seven months? Uh, it's 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 really questioning. Okay. It's 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 no one knows. It's very we are in a very tough time, right? And I think if the if the standoff continues like this, if the government does not move forward to meet these people, and these people don't start leaving, or if some unfortunate incident happens, it will be very bad for us. Um, Dr. Rana, uh, I, I, I'm going to ask you the same thing I asked you last time before we wrapped up. How can people learn more about the Centrist Party? Can they follow? Is there a website, social media that they can follow? 
Centrist Party has a website, centristpartycanada.ca. Uh, we have Twitter, Facebook, uh, and other social media accounts, the YouTube channel. Uh, people can go and uh, learn about our platform. Uh, we claim to be very pragmatic and centrist, uh, and uh, we don't believe in extremist uh, left or right wing ideology. Dr. Rana, I want to thank you so much for doing this tonight. I appreciate it. Well, today as we're filming there, when we're releasing this today, but when we're recording this tonight, I appreciate everything you do. And uh, like you said, for the sake of democracy, I do hope it does survive the next few months because it is going to be a challenge. Thank you so much, Chris, for having me. It was nice talking to you. For sure. And now we'll have you back on for sure if something else happens here. For everyone here at the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown, have yourself an excellent rest of your day. And remember, guys, keep talking. <laughs>